Hi, I'm Nick Bellissimo, and I'm an Associate Professor of Nutritional Physiology and Director of the Nutrition Discovery Labs at Ryerson University. I'm Christy Brissett, and I'm a registered dietitian with a Master's in Nutritional Sciences. I counsel clients, and I write for some of the top magazines and newspapers in North America. Do you have questions about sugars and sweeteners? You're not alone. It can be really confusing out there with all of the conflicting media coverage as well as latest research constantly changing our minds about sugars. So what we did is we took to Google and took a look at your most burning questions about sugars. And we're going to do our best to answer them for you today. We're going to start with one of your most popular questions. Is sugar bad for you? So um, sugars are found in a variety of foods, including uh, fruits and vegetables, um, or they can be added to food as an ingredient. Um, and sugars are not dissimilar to other carbohydrates in that they provide the body with energy, uh, provide fuel during exercise, and support normal brain function. But really the important takeaway message is that whether sugars are naturally occurring or added, the body handles them in the exact same way. That's right. And a healthy diet has the right number of calories for you and your physical activity level, as well as enough of the vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients that your body needs. Taking in too many calories, whether it's from sugars, other carbohydrates, protein, or fat, is not a good idea. This can lead to weight gain, and we know that being overweight is linked to a variety of health problems. Next question, is sugar addictive? Interestingly, when we look at research on this topic, and while we know pleasurable foods may activate reward pathways in the brain, it doesn't mean they're addictive. We know things like money, intimacy, and even consuming water will activate those same brain regions. Now, the majority of the research is actually based on animal work, and it doesn't actually translate all that well to humans. And it most certainly doesn't explain the increase in the prevalence of obesity over the past 30 years. And while we know certain drugs produce effects like tolerance and withdrawal, the best available evidence suggests that sugars do not. Is sugar hidden in foods? That's a great question. You can find information on sugars on your food labels in two different spots. First of all is the nutrition facts table. Here you find information on amounts. So you get the total amount of carbohydrate as well as the total amount of sugars that are in the listed serving size of the food or beverage. The other place to look is the ingredient list. This tells you the sources of different types of sugars or sweeteners that have been added. So for example, we have fancy molasses, we have brown sugar, you'll see different names based on the different sources of sugars or sweeteners that are used. And one thing to note is the ingredients list is listed from the largest amount of what's in the food to the smallest amount of what's used. So if you want to know if a product is high in added sugars, you can tell that by finding sugar listed early on in the ingredients list. Okay, our next question, does sugar make you fat? So the field of body weight regulation is actually quite complex and involves many factors that will ultimately determine whether you gain weight. The research suggests that consuming too many calories and not just sugars, but starches, proteins, and fat, and not burning those calories off through physical activity can contribute to weight gain. Of course, it's not just about calories. We know that things like your genetics, your sleep patterns, and your social lifestyle may all play a role. If you want to lose weight, focus on getting fewer calories from the foods and beverages that you consume. It makes sense to try to satisfy your thirst with mostly water and to choose foods that are as nutritious as possible that contain a variety of carbohydrates, proteins, fiber, and healthy fats. You can still make room in a healthy diet for some of those what I call fun foods or higher calorie, less nutritious foods, but just have them in smaller amounts. Getting enough sleep and also increasing your physical activity level 
are important ways to keep your weight at a healthy level as well. And the sustainability of your diet is that other piece. So by including some of your favorite foods and occasional treats, it's gonna be a healthy eating pattern that you can stick to over the long term. Versus a diet where you tell yourself, I can never have my favorite foods again. <laughs> never is a long time. Mm -hmm. And who wants to live without gelato, am I right? <laughs> okay, our next question is, does sugar make kids hyper? I'll take this one. Most research studies suggest that sugar intake is not linked to hyper behavior in children. And it's also not linked to hyperactivity in people with ADHD. Researchers think that this myth or this supposed link between sugar and being hyper is really because foods that are high in added sugars tend to be served at special occasions. So holiday parties, recess, birthday parties, for example. And kids are running around because they're excited to be amongst their friends. So having a slice of cake at a birthday party or a special occasion, totally part of being a kid and enjoying life. And the rest of the time, you can try to make desserts healthier by boosting some of the nutritious ingredients that are in them. Okay, next question. Does sugar give you diabetes? Well, if you have diabetes, you want to keep an eye on the amount of total carbohydrates that you're taking in throughout the day, and also make sure that you're spreading them out during the day. Having said that, it's important that we take a look at the research on this question because we can see that having small amounts of added sugars does not cause diabetes. And it can be part of a healthy diet for people who are living with diabetes. If you do have diabetes, meet with a registered dietitian who can help you decide what a healthy eating pattern is for you and to help you manage your blood sugar levels better. And you can also use your nutrition facts tables to take a look at the total carbohydrates that are in foods that you're enjoying frequently. There are actually many factors that can lead to type 2 diabetes. Uh, and this includes your family history, your level of physical activity, and your overall diet quality. It's actually quite complex. Research suggests that the major risk factor for type 2 diabetes is obesity, which we know results from consuming an excess of calories and not burning those calories off through physical activity. Okay, ready for our next question. How much sugar do Canadians eat? So on average, Canadians consume approximately 11% of their daily calories from added sugars. And this works out to about 13 teaspoons per day, and that would be considered a moderate amount. Um, and interestingly, over the past 20 years, while obesity rates have continued to increase, we've noticed a decline in added sugar consumption over that same time frame. Our final question, how much sugar is too much? So this all depends on an individual's specific energy needs. For example, if you work all day at a desk and then go home and sit in front of the screen all evening, you're not burning much energy. So you really should be consuming fewer calories and not just from sugar. On the other hand, if you are active um, or have a physically demanding job, you should be consuming additional calories from a variety of food sources to keep your energy levels up. And we know that carbohydrates are really important for exercise, and as your exercise intensity increases, so will your reliance on carbohydrates. We hope we answered some of your top questions about sugars and made you think twice about some of the answers. And thanks again for joining us.